So guys, it's been roughly two weeks since Tesla Vision was released and I've had tons of experiences with it and now I want to talk about it. Now, I did some fun non-scientific testing in some of my previous videos. If you guys haven't already seen those videos, please check it out. I'll drop the link in the description below as well as up top there. It gives you guys an insight of what Tesla Vision is all about when it first came out and what we have right now. Now, in all honesty, not much has been changed so far when it first got released until this point. There was a software update that supposedly should have fixed things but it really was the same. Now you guys know that I have a thing for Tesla and I'm 100% rooting for this to work and just to prove me wrong but there are a couple caveats to this and I do want to talk about it and I do want to talk about how the system needs improvements and why it's not going to work. Now I'm not just going to come out and say it in this video that it's just not going to work that easily. There is a lot of engineers working behind the scenes making this work but there are some limitations that had to be said. Before we jump into this video just jump on in with an open mind because these are all my personal experiences and my personal opinions on it. It might differ from the next guy next to you so just keep that in mind before you guys jump on into the comments and start saying a bunch of things. Oh and if you guys have a moment please hit that subscribe and that bell notification before we begin this and just don't click that unsubscribe button even if you guys hate this video. Alright so I want to lay some ground rules here and there are a lot of things that I'm not going to consider into the progress and into the performance of the Tesla Vision parking assist. I'm not going to take into the account the squiggly lines. I'm not going to take into account the inconsistencies of the measurements and the distances. I'm also not going to take into account that the system sometimes shuts off or takes a very long time to boot back up. I'm only able to say this because I am a software person myself and I can see my team personally fixing this up in a couple future updates so it's not a big deal. But the thing I'm concerned about here is the overall lack of hardware. Now I said this time and time again there is no way you can compensate a lack of hardware with software there's only so much software can do and I've experienced this countless times while working on some projects so anyways simply we're gonna split this into three separate parts it's gonna be blind spots quality and redundancy first off blind spots are an obvious problem the entire front bumper area is a gigantic blind spot and there is no way software tricks are going to overcome this I've been writing complex software for multiple years now and outside of what Tesla is doing there is nothing else they can do but just simply have the system guess. Now on top of that cameras are horrible at distance measurements that's why you and I with our eye perception we're not able to approximate very well. Have you guys ever thought about why we scrape up our wheels and bumpers if our approximation or our distance measurements are so good and even on that fact Tesla is using LiDAR systems right now to double check to fact check the camera systems so that means that LiDAR is going to be a lot more superior. Now on the topic of LiDAR, I'm just going to push that aside because I don't want to get into this debatable topic whether we need it or we don't need it. We'll just have to really wait and see. But what it comes down to is predictions, estimations, and approximations are not good enough to get you to park safely. All right, and on to number two, and that is quality. Cameras get blocked by water, dirt, snow, and darkness all the time. The lens itself gets damaged and scuffed all the time just simply by people tapping their key cards onto the wrong area on the B pillar. I'm not saying that's the only scenario here but there are other placements of the camera can also get damaged as well. And then the sensors can also fail. Now I'm not talking about fail as in it completely dies off but it can fail and reduce the quality of the image and data coming into the computer board. So Tesla doesn't really have a way to overcome any of these issues and what they're doing is just hoping for the fact that none of those things that I described happens but the thing is it has happened for multiple years it's happened even before Tesla Vision Park Assist came out it happened even in the days where ultrasonic sensors and radar existed you guys probably already know by driving down the street on a rainy day or in complete darkness you will see messages like this pop up on the screen where it's going to notify you that a camera has been blocked and it's going to wait to regain visibility or it needs you to come and wipe it off physically so this is something that again software is not going to be able to over overcome and it's going to require you to do something about it. Now what I even noticed in some of other people's testing is that if the camera gets dirty even a little bit the approximation is completely wrong. It'll give you a distance measurement of let's say 50 inches away when you're literally right next to hitting your bumper. It may or may not display a message that the quality has been degraded and the distance measurement is wrong. So this is where parking
parking sensors is going to be a lot more superior and I did a lot of tests with Tesla Vision versus my own parking sensors and the parking sensors always comes out on top. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be the resolution to all this but you'll see that other manufacturers that do rely on the cameras as part of their parking assist system they will have sprayers, wipers or some kind of method to clean the sensors and the lens. That's the proper way of doing it and I don't know if there is a way to overcome the complete total pitch dark but that is something that they're gonna have to work out before it's gonna work consistently all the time. I would think of something that would work is an IR blaster or a 3D scanner maybe something like Apple puts on your iPhone. Alright so on the last one here and that is redundancy. I think this is the most critical one of all because redundancy is needed when full self driving comes out and it's definitely gonna be needed when your robo taxi wants to park but at the moment just like you and I right now who own Tezas you're not gonna be able to park properly knowing that it'll work every time because there is no redundant system. So like I mentioned in the previous points, a lot of things can happen to the camera blocking it from being able to see. But for the past decade, we've had a lot of different sensors on our vehicles. If you guys can remember back, we had radar, we had parking sensors, and on top of that, we had the cameras. So it's not like that we didn't have cameras all along and we were relying purely on the other sensors. We had all three systems backing each other up in case something ever happens. Now one can argue the fact that radar is not needed because it's unreliable or parking distance sensors are not needed because camera can see much better in higher quality. But that's not the point here guys. The point is that if one fails, another one can pick up at least until you can fix the other sensors or clear it from whatever is blocking the system. But what you can see Tesla is doing here is relying purely on the vision system and because there is only one camera in every viewing angle if that camera gets blocked it's just not gonna work with the parking sensors at least if one parking sensor stops working the other parking sensors can take in place of that and in the likelihood and very rare here that all the parking sensors get blocked at one time the cameras are still active and the camera can use Tesla Vision to still complete the maneuver. Whereas if you can see with Tesla Vision right now, if it gets blocked, there is nothing to back it up. And the chance of that little camera being blocked is extremely high because as you guys can see, water, dirt gets splashed on it regularly as you drive in the rain. And I don't know if Tesla is going to improve this aspect of it, but it seems right now that if one camera gets blocked, the whole system fails. So what it comes down to is that Tesla needs to have redundancy and I don't know if future cars are gonna have that or they're gonna be so firm with sticking with the cameras that it's just not gonna work as well as other suites. Regardless of the amount of cameras and their placements, even if there was 10 or 20 cameras around the vehicle, the fact that if all of them get blocked up, there is no other way of getting it to work. But on the topic of cameras, like I said, there is a giant blind spot right up front there. There needs to be a blind spot camera for it to get a better approximation of what the object and where it is. Now of course there are other products out there that try to fix this issue like lens cover and hydrophobic coatings but those don't work very well and those shouldn't even be applied when it should have been applied from the manufacturer themselves. The only way that I can see Tesla sort this out and keep the whole camera set up is if they add some kind of physical cleaner to it. So this is why you'll see the front facing camera which is used for FSD and autopilot is underneath the windshield and it's in the path of the windshield wipers. So they do know that it does need to be cleaned and even though it's placed on a high part of the vehicle, it will get covered up eventually. So there's no doubt that other parts of the car will experience the same things. Now at this point, you guys might think I'm just ranting on and on about Tesla Vision and how it sucks, but honestly guys, it's just expected in 20. 2023 for things to work but one other thing that I'm really upset about is the fact that auto park and summon is nowhere to be heard right now nowhere to be seen at all it seems as if Tesla is completely disregarding that we're paying for the FSD or enhanced autopilot and missing 60 or 70 percent of the features economy cars are coming off the line right now like Hondas and Toyotas that they have a really reliable auto park and even some vehicles are having summon features now and then there's a car that's so technologically advanced like a Tesla doesn't have any of these features kind of blows my mind a little bit. Fingers crossed that they do get this sorted out eventually. I don't think it's going to be on the same quality and on the same par as what we got with the parking sensors 
but I think that they're gonna have something that's gonna at least work for the time being. There are also a lot of other ways software wise that Tesla can remove artifacts like rain, dirt, snow, and whatnot, but I think those are all being used right now as we speak, so there's not too much more that they can add on top of it, and the fact that when the camera is completely covered up, there's no software trick again that's gonna be able to remove the complete blockage just because they can use some kind of filter to see through it. So take it however you guys like, but I do think that Tesla does know the limitations of their hardware right now and does know the necessary steps to take to get this to work again. With the recent updates of 2023.12.1, they did make some adjustments to make the system perform a little bit better, but in my opinion, it stayed pretty much the same. It's just on par like what it was before, with the exception of the system saying that it's deactivated when you get close to an object. So anyways, guys, this is just my thoughts in the last couple weeks of using it, and I do think that hardware 4.5 is on the horizon, and that's why when Tesla is going to make the major substantial changes to make this work. This should wrap it up for this guys, but if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down there and I'll try my best to answer every single one of them. If you guys have a moment, please hit that subscribe and that bell notification before you guys head out. Anyways, this is John once again. Peace out.